Hi everyone, welcome back to Java Techie. If you are a Spring Boot developer or aspiring to be one, then I have something special lined up for you. I will be diving deep into Spring Boot interview question and answer series, where we will cover all possible Spring Boot interview questions from basic to advanced concept and also I will try to provide you with the clear and concise answers which will not only help you during your interviews journey but also it will improve your overall understanding of Spring Boot. Okay. All right. So without any further delay, let's get started with the first part of the series. So here we begin with our first question that is why will you choose Spring Boot over Spring Framework? If you will attend any interview as a Spring Boot developer, then blindly this is the first question you will get from the interviewer that why Spring Boot, why not Spring Framework? Okay, so interviewer don't want to listen the theory from you. He just want to know how far you understand the Spring Boot and its advantages. So that is the reason I have listed down all the bullet points to identify why Spring Boot is better than Spring Framework will go one by one. The first key bullet point is dependency resolution or avoid version conflict. So just think before Spring Boot when I want to design some crowd application let's say I want to use the Spring and Hibernate then I need to manually add the dependency right. I need to add the Spring Core, Spring Context then Spring MVC and Spring Hibernate lot of dependency I need to add it manually right so to demonstrate that I have some code for you I will just show you that what all dependency we need to add if you are creating the plain Spring project not the Spring Boot one so this is the project so this is kind of Spring crowd example using the Hibernate so if I will open the pom.xml let me zoom this for you can you see here I am using Spring Core Spring Context Spring Transaction, Spring ORM, Spring Web, Spring Web MVC, Hibernate Core, Hibernate Validator, then MySQL Connector, Jackson Related Dependency, then Servlet API. Okay, so these many dependency I added manually. Also, if you will observe, I have specified the dependency version manually. So Spring Core, Spring Context. I am specifying that I just want to use the 4.3.2 release version of Spring Framework. So again there is another challenge to get the version conflict. Let's say Spring Core I am using 4.3.2 and context I want to either downgrade or upgrade. So there may be a chance to not support the backward compatibility because we have specified the dependency manually. That is another challenge in Spring Framework. And the biggest challenge is I feel that you need to remember what all dependency you need to add while creating a project. So while creating a Spring Crowd application, you need to know that these are the dependency I need to play with. Fine. This is what the biggest challenges in Spring Framework in case of dependency resolution and conflict avoiding. But let's see how this Spring Boot make the job easier for us as part of this particular bullet point that version management and dependency resolution. So let me open the same project with the Spring Boot. Now if I will go to the pom.xml. So just observe carefully what all dependency I have added. Spring Boot Starter Data JPA, Spring Boot Starter Web, then which driver I want to use that is MySQL Connector and Lombok. You can ignore that for now. So we have added only two dependency JPA and Web to just perform the crowd application using the Web MVC. So if you observe in the old project using the spring we have added minimum 10 dependency right and that too we have specified the version manually but in case of spring boot these two dependency is enough to handle the spring MVC crowd application and also we have not specified the dependency version. How then dependency will be managed here based on the parent version. So if you specify that okay this particular parent version of Spring Boot Starter I want to use then internally Spring Boot will be bring all the corresponding or transitive dependency for these two particular key dependency. 
so if you add spring data jpa internally spring boot will add the hibernate specific dependency for you if you will add the spring boot starter web then by default spring boot will load spring core context everything for you on your class path that is how the first point that using the spring boot we no need to take the headache of this version conflict and it is quickly help us to do the dependency resolution just add two dependency it will enough and even you no need to specify the version okay i believe the first point is clear for you now the second bullet point if you are using spring boot then you can avoid additional configuration to perform any task let's take the same example that i want to perform the crowd operation using web mbc then we'll see what all configuration you want to do if you are using the spring framework then what all configuration required if you are using spring boot we'll do this comparison to understand this avoid additional configuration if you are using spring boot so let me go back to the project the old project which we designed using the spring framework if you'll go inside this java web app now if you observe in the web app i have three xml configuration application hyphen context dot xml let me open this what is there let me zoom this for you so if you observe if i am using this plain spring framework then i need to create the data source object by defining all the required properties of data source then i need to create the session factory object and i need to inject the data source which i created to the session factory then i need to define all the hibernate properties hibernate so sql hibernate hbm to ddl all the required properties then i need to create the transaction manager and i need to inject the session factory to the transaction manager Th these are the three key steps you need to perform create the data source create the session factory create the transaction manager then inject all the required dependency okay and also make sure to inject all the required properties now let's move to the next configuration in this configuration i am telling to the spring framework hey spring can you please scan this particular packages all the packages or all the classes inside this particular root packages based on that spring framework will load your classes to the context okay and if you go here in the web.xml can you see here i am telling that inside the webinf i have the web.xml to kick up my dispatcher servlet manually okay so here i am just defining the web.xml to kick up the dispatcher servlet these are the complex configuration using xml i am doing in the spring framework if you can avoid xml that is fine in spring also you have a option to define the java based configuration but still you need to create this bin manually data source session factory transaction manager and this component scan enable and this dispatcher servlet everything you need to configure manually but let's compare the same thing that we are doing the spring crowd example using spring boot what all minimum configuration we need to do okay so go back to the spring boot project now in spring boot project if you'll go into the project section main java forget about these packages and classes so i am i just want to show you the configuration okay so go to the application dot properties go to the application dot yml file here is my configuration in spring boot i no need to care about creating the data source transaction manager session factory manually everything will be handled by spring boot itself can you see here i have just defined okay these are my properties and i am just telling to the jpa that create the table automatically and these are the so sql true these are the things and i am just using the mysql dialect these are the things i just define as part of the properties to tell to the spring boot build the data source object for me and give me give me the jpa transaction manager and jpa related classes to me so that i can quickly perform now if i want to use the database in the spring boot project simply i need to create a if i'll go here i have a repository i just need to create a interface extends it from jpa repository everything will be sorted for me to start playing with the crowd related operation okay so this kind of headache is not required in spring boot i am not relying on additional configuration on spring boot i have just defined the required properties to kick up my database persistence layer that is what the major difference in spring and spring boot in spring framework you need to rely on 
complex additional configuration in spring boot it's not required okay i believe the second point is clear for you let's move to the next bullet point that is embedded tomcat jt is given by spring boot to quickly deploy your jar or war file to the perform quick testing in spring boot now if you are running any application in the spring framework then manually you need to build a jar or war file then you need to host it to your external tomcat server to just verify your features or to just access the application functionality but in case of spring boot if you will open the spring boot project you no need to do anything okay spring boot by default will give you an internal embedded tomcat server which will quickly pick up your jar and will kick start your application so for example i want to run this application i can simply so if you will go to the project and if you will go to the src java then there will be a main class annotated with other red spring boot application okay just start this particular key or you can start from this particular here id also this icon just click on this it will start your application and it will host your application to the embedded tomcat server so it will quickly start within a 2 to 3 second can you see here it quickly started on custom port which i have defined okay i'll come to this kind of question how you can do the properties changes or override the behavior but for now just try to understand how spring boot is better than spring framework okay so it marks take 2 to 3 second for me to get the jar from the target folder and load it into the application context and kick up the embedded server for me but same thing in spring framework is bit complex you need to generate the war file then you need to give that word to the external tomcat to kick up your application okay now let's go to the fourth bullet point that provide production ready features such as matrix health and check okay so in spring boot there is a separate starter called actuator using that actuator you can easily monitor your application in each and every environment okay so if you add that dependency you will get couple of endpoint like slash bin slash health slash matrix even you can register your own custom matrix to just monitor your application in any environment but same thing if you want to perform in the spring framework the approach is not straight forward you need to rely on couple of dashboard to monitor your application or to monitor your health of your application in each and every environment okay so this particular actuator feature i will keep as a side for now because i am going to cover this particular actuator all the possible interview question and its internal in my upcoming series okay so let's move to the next question that is what all spring boot starter you have used or what all module you have worked on so interviewer is asking this question to just know that what all module of spring boot you are already familiar or you already worked on it so there are tons of starter dependency given by spring boot to perform different use case but these are the common starter which is being used in industry i mean based on the use case you need to find out what all starter you need to include so i have just listed down here couple of starter so spring boot starter wave is being used if you want to design some web mbc specific application spring data jpa if you want to integrate your application to the any persistence layer then you need to use this spring boot starter data jpa and if you want to perform any aop related operation then you need to add this spring boot starter aop but if you want to use something or if you want to expose soap based web services then you need to include this spring boot starter web services and if you want to include the security as part of your application then you need to add this spring boot starter security and if you want to play with the event driven architecture or if you want to use the messaging channel then you need to include this spring boot starter for apache kafka if you are building the microservice and need features like service discovery configuration management and load balancing then you need to include this spring cloud and if you want to include the static web page to your application then you can use the spring boot starter time leaf okay these are the common dependency i have explained but if you want to know more about what all modules available in spring boot or what all starter is available in spring boot then simply go to the spring.io.projects then spring boot and you can see here lot of modules so these are the modules spring data is a module spring cloud is a module 
spring boot itself is a module then spring security spring batch spring for apache kafka these are the modules so if you go inside the spring data data jdbc jpa ldap mongodb these are the individual starter available in this spring data module so you can simply explain to the interviewer that okay these are the modules i have worked spring data spring security spring batch then if he is asking more about the starter dependency then you can list down what all dependency you have already worked or what you can remember that time okay that's pretty simple now let's move to the next question that is how will you run your spring boot application so this question looks very simple but there are something you need to know interviewer don't want to know how you are starting your application he just asked this question to know that how internally it loads your jar or from where it will load your jar those things he just wanted to know okay so i'll show you in the code let's go to the spring boot application now you need to go to the src main then go to the packages where you have your main class just open that class now here you can run your application i mean it will just run from the main method so you can simply run from here or you can directly run from here as a spring boot application or you can run from directly in the id so let me run from here so it started on default port 8080 let me stop this now what is the next way if i don't want to run the application from the id then there is a mbn plugin given by spring boot itself that you need to run so let me show you that so can you see here mbn spring boot colon run so this spring boot colon run is a just a plugin as part of the maven so if you will open this if you go to the plugin section can you see here we have this spring boot plugin and this is the run method what you can run from your terminal to kick up your spring boot application okay now let me show you go to the terminal let me run this can you see here i cannot zoom this right that's fine spring boot interview question and snapshot this is just building my jar file okay and copying the resources let it be finally it started my application on port 8080 right now the interesting fact to know here how this particular command mbn spring boot run load my jar file and execute the jar or from where it will load the jar file that is what something we need to know right so forget about any framework if it is a java application and you are using the maven build tool then by default the jar will be placed inside the target folder can i open this target folder and can you see any jar here classes generate source test source maven status test classes can you see any jar file here no right then how come this particular command this particular command mbn spring boot run loads the jar file from where he load the jar file that's quite interesting isn't it then how it works without the jar file so what it does when you run this particular command mbn spring hyphen boot colon run it executes your application directly from the target under classes okay so it, so it goes to this particular folder and then it picked up your main class and then it trigger the execution from this main class it does not create a separate jar file unless you explicitly package your application using maven package or some similar command like gradle or something like that okay so if you are using maven spring boot run command you won't find a jar file in your project directory during the development but it is generated during the build processes and include in the jar file okay so if you want to look into the jar structure how it looks at run time then what i can do so simply i'll just build the jar manually let me build the jar okay so whenever we are running the command it goes to the target folder it go to the compiled classes inside this and it go to the main class of my directory and it directly trigger from here without storing the jar file in target folder okay so that is why our embedded server kicked up so quickly right because it goes to the compiled classes and trigger the main method simple now if you will initiate the actual maven build 
then it will generate the jar inside the target let me refresh yeah can you see here the jar file let me copy this jar file then we'll extract it and we'll see its internal structure okay let me paste it in the desktop then i'll just open a new terminal i'll go to the desktop folder jar is there right what is the jar name this is the jar name let me copy this so let me clear this there is a command to extract the jar jar xf then give the jar name okay now if you go to the folder can you see here I have kept my jar in the desktop folder so it created boot hyphen inf inside that it will load all the classes and library now if you go here you will find something meta inf meta hyphen inf then it keep a file called manifest.mf if you open this class can I zoom this yeah if I will open this class let me show you this class contains everything need to trigger your Spring Boot application can you see here implementation title is this what is the snapshot version is this then what is your start class to trigger your main method this is what the class name Spring Boot version is 3.1.2 where it contains all the required library this is the path I mean this is the key file Spring Boot jar contains so based on when you will run your jar it will pick up this particular file file and identify who is the main class I need to run okay so this is how it execute the jar in Spring Boot fine let's move to the next question that is what is the purpose of at the rate Spring Boot application annotation in a Spring Boot application so this is one of the most commonly asked Spring Boot interview question that what is the role of at the rate Spring Boot application annotation okay first of all this particular at the rate Spring Boot application annotation is combination of these three annotation at the rate enable auto configuration at the rate component scan at the rate configuration so to explain what is at the rate Spring Boot application first you should have knowledge on these three annotation and their purpose of using okay so to if I just want to demonstrate that let me go to the code I will go to the main class where I have this annotation this is the class right and this is the annotation we are talking about so if you will extract the source code let me zoom this for you can you see here this particular class this particular annotation at the rate Spring Boot application is combination of enable auto configuration at the rate Spring Boot configuration and at the rate component scan now you need to tell to the interviewer about roles of each annotation if you know these three annotation then it is quite easy to impress the interviewer okay so don't worry I will go each and every annotation now so the first one at the rate enable auto configuration if I will open this particular annotation this is the at the rate enable auto configuration this is one of the key features in Spring Boot I will come to this question in a moment with detailed explanation but for now at high level just understand enable auto configuration will automatically configure various components for your application by just scanning your dependency and class path whatever the dependency you have added in your pom.xml this particular auto configuration will scan this dependency and will load all the required jar for you okay so can you see here I have just added the web dependency in this project and this JP I have just commented out so since I have added the web dependency all the corresponding classes and all the required features to play with this particular dependency or the starter by default this auto configuration will enable for us okay so don't worry we'll do further postmortem of this question just keep it aside for now okay now go to the second annotation that is at the rate component scan this particular annotation enables component scanning in the package where you have your main class and its sub packages so for example if you extract this particular folder where I have my main class inside this Java techie so by default since this at the rate component scan annotation 
present in the Spring Boot application annotation. By default, it will load my main class, which is comes under com dot Java tech key, and it's all the sub packages, config, controller, repository, service, and DI, right? But if I have any class present external to this particular packages, which is business dot common, which is external to this Java tech key, where my main class located, then Spring Boot by default will not load that particular bin or will not add that bin to the context okay so let's prove it first so i have something called business.common package which is external to this com.javatiki where my main class is located now i have this demo class and i have created a constructor with some sysout statement fine now let me run the application first let me stop from here then I'll run from here. We'll see whether this particular statement is getting executed or not. So if you observe in the console, we can't see this demo class loaded by Spring Boot because the by default component scan will look into the main class and its corresponding sub packages. Since it is external to the application or it is external to the root packages, then it won't load automatically. For that, what you can do, you can tell to the Spring Boot, go to the main class, you can tell to the Spring Boot, hey, at the rate Spring Boot application annotation, while you are executing your default component scan, also include the base packages or scan the base packages, which is com dot, what is the package name? Com dot business dot common, right? You can explicitly tell to the Spring Boot application to load your packages if you are not following the proper hierarchy. Okay, now let me run this. When I say proper hierarchy, it is always good practice to keep a root package where you can have your main class and then define as much as package you need inside this config. Okay, new, let's say new packages, uh, something like uh, util like this it should be come in this hierarchy okay now since we have tell to the spring boot to scan this particular package explicitly now can you see here in the output this particular class is loaded so that is what if you observe this is what this component scan behind the scene he does this but he don't understand if you don't understand the hierarchy main class and its sub packages then he won't load that so for that explicitly you need to specify here okay that's fine now what is the fourth third annotation if you'll go here we understand enable auto configuration at high level we understand at the rate component scan and its behavior then the last one is at the rate configuration so just go back to the code then go inside this particular annotation and if i'll open this what is there yeah if i'll open this spring boot configuration this is what the configuration annotation we are talking about, right? So what this configuration annotation does behind the scene, it allows to register extra bin in the context or import additional configuration classes. So for example, let's say I have created this application. I want to customize my security specific config or I want to customize my documentation, let's say swagger specific config or I want to define my JWT config or something I want to customize the configuration. So how Spring Boot will load those config classes. So if you observe here, I have defined security config and swagger config. Can you see here? This is the security one and this is the swagger config. So to just understand, I have defined at the rate configuration to tell to the Spring Boot, hey, this is just my configuration class. Please import while application startup. So that is the reason I have just added the SOPLN statement to just understand that on application startup at the rate configuration is loading these extra config class or not, whether it is inputting those class or not. Okay. So let me run the application. Let's check the console. Are you able to see the statement? No, right? It's only loading this demo class scan because that is what we have just defined here. So go to the main class. 
here we are telling to the spring boot to only scan these base packages so here we need to include the other packages which is our root packages okay so i can define com dot java techie dot star now let me run this can you see here the output it loaded the security config and swagger config fine so let me remove this annotation this i just added to explain you about the how this components can internally works okay that's fine now let's move to the next question that is can i directly use above three annotation in my main class instead of using other its spring boot application annotation if yes will my application works so simple thing instead of we, know, we understand other its spring boot application is combination of these three annotation right so instead of writing other its spring boot application annotation can i use these three annotation let's see let's go to the code we'll remove this annotation we'll add other it enable auto configuration then we'll also add other it component scan and we need to tell what all packages need to be scanned the way we have defined before i want it to be scan com dot java techie all the packages then i also wanted him to scan com dot what is that demo right com dot business com dot business and also i want to load the external configuration right so i can annotate here other at import and i can define my custom configuration which i want to load so that is security config dot class and what else swagger config fine so these are my configuration class using other at import i want to load those two classes fine let me run the application can you see the output application started on port default on 8080 and it loaded my security config swagger config also external class to my root packages so instead of writing other its spring boot application annotation you can happily play with the other three annotation enable auto configuration component scan and other its configuration so there is no doubt on it okay now let's move to the next question that is what is auto configuration in spring boot this is really a super feature given by spring boot developer which automatically configures the application based on the class path dependency property settings and some other conditions so we'll not go with the theory we'll go one step ahead to understand how this auto configuration feature works under the hood okay so just go to the application let me revert it back i'll just add other red spring boot application annotation okay that's fine let me close everything then first we'll go to the pom.xml we'll verify what all dependency we have added here we have added the spring boot starter web and this is the parent dependency we are using the latest version of spring boot 3.1.2 and lombok lombok is fine it's the third party library but this is the spring boot starter i have added only that is spring boot starter web and i have commented out the jpa and all the things let me remove it for now i don't want you to be confused on the dependency hierarchy so we are using only the spring boot starter web to understand if i load the spring boot starter web dependency then what all classes will be auto configured by spring boot okay i just wanted to know if i load this specific dependency then how this spring boot auto configuration feature will work what all classes or what all things it will be load for me so for that to know that what you can do go to the resource go to the application dot properties just tell that hey while application start up just debug it for me this auto configuration feature tell me that what all things you can do for me or what all you cannot do for me okay so that is the reason you need to define this key debug equal to true all good now let me run my application so it started now there are so many logs can you see in the console while it's starting the application it will evaluate the condition 
okay so it will evaluate the condition then it will find some positive matches which will be enabled by default for you after scanning your dependency and class path spring boot understand okay these are the things i need to auto configure for this particular project okay now if you will scroll down there is something called negative matches let me scroll down yeah can you see here there is something called negative matches these are the things i will not auto configure for you there are two things positive matches and negative matches so whatever the configuration comes under positive matches those will be enabled by spring boot for your application again that depends on with some condition so we'll verify with the example okay so there is something called jackson auto configuration okay this will by default auto configure for you because it comes under positive matches if you observe here it comes under positive matches let me search search that jackson auto configuration now on which basis spring boot auto configuration features decided that okay i need to enable this jackson auto configuration feature for this specific application okay first thing we understand it will scan your dependency and class path then it will decide then apart from that what all things it consider before enabling the auto configuration for this specific class so to understand that what i can do i will simply open that class jackson auto configuration let me minimize yeah can you see here at the rate auto configuration enable this specific auto configuration class if you found object mapper on your class can you see here there is a condition at the rate condition on class if you found the object mapper in a class path then only enable this jackson auto configuration okay now this is the simple class so now if i'll search i have object mapper project can you see here it is already there in my class path it is there already there in my dependency hierarchy this class so that is the reason spring boot decided okay this is the positive match i found and then i look further if you open the class that is what he is checking another condition conditional on class if object mapper dot class is present in the class path i will happy to auto configure this for you okay now this is the simple one okay let's move into one common class to understand how this auto configuration works that will be more simple for us to relate the auto configuration feature this is just the simple one i explained because there are so many condition statement can be come to decided whether need to i need to enable the auto configuration for this class or not okay that's fine so i'll go to the run method i will search for something data source auto configuration now if you observe this data source auto configuration it comes under let me scroll up yeah it comes under negative matches the first reason it comes under negative matches because we have not specify the dependency right so if you go and check in the pom.xml we have not specify the jpa dependency that is the reason at the first step spring boot scan the dependency and he don't found anything specific to the data source so he simply ignore it and just keep it inside the negative matches now let me add it let me add this dependency let me rerun my application so now if you observe here application failed to start forget about this error we are not going to fix that but we just wanted to know what is this auto configuration now for this particular class the data source auto configuration can you see here data source auto configuration let me check the first one can you see here data source auto configuration matched now if you scroll up it comes under the positive matches earlier it comes under negative matches because it didn't found the jpa dependency on our class path now it scan the class path and found that okay this guy have the jpa dependency 
so i need to enable this class for this particular user but how he will decide whether again i need to enable this or not go to this class there are so many condition based on the condition only this spring boot auto configuration decided whether okay these features need to be enable for this application or not so let me open that auto configuration before sql initializer auto configuration forget about it i'll come to this point now understand the key conditions what is that condition on class data source dot class if data source dot class is present in the class path and embedded data database type dot class is present either these two either one is present then i will enable this data source auto configuration when i am saying it will enable data source auto configuration for us means it will create the data source object and it will do all the steps to perform the dv operation okay now there is the second annotation condition on missing bin if this particular bin is missing then only i will enable this data source auto configuration for this particular project because if you observe io.r2dbc.spi this is for reactive in rdb mesh so if that is enable sorry if that is disable then i will just enable this data source auto configuration for you now the third condition at the rate enable configuration properties if these are the data source properties is available for me class loader driver class name url username and password if these are the properties i found in the properties configuration then only i will enable this data source auto configuration okay now there are several data source object will be instantiated by this auto configuration class if you see here there is something called pool data source configuration and there is something called you will find something called embedded okay embedded database there are so many database instance or data source instance will be configured based on these conditions okay now let's brush up once again on which conditions this data source auto configuration will be enable for our application if data source dot class or embedded data type dot class is present in the class path that is the reason at the rate conditional on class if conditional on missing bin if this bin is missing from my application context or my uh, class path then will enable the data source auto configuration and then enable configuration properties if these are the properties driver class name url username and password if these are the common properties available in the application dot properties or application dot yml with the prefix spring dot data source dot driver class name dot url username and password then only i will by default enable this data source auto configuration for this specific project now if you observe here data source auto configuration matched and these are the condition right but we are getting the error even though spring boot auto configuration is trying to auto configure this data source auto configuration for us still there are some condition is not satisfied like we have not ha added the data source properties with like this spring dot data source driver class url username we have not added anything so that is the reason what it is saying as part of the error fail to configure data source url attribute is not specified and no embedded data source could be configured fine so it is clearly saying okay i strictly specify while auto configuring you must need to specify the url driver class name username and password but you have not specified it so i i am just shutting down your application if you don't want to do that go with the embedded database like h2 sql or derby so to satisfy this auto configuration feature what i can do i will add these properties okay go to the application dot properties file i am just adding the properties so what all properties i have added spring dot data source is the prefix that is what mention here then what is the next field i am adding driver class name url username and password these are the attribute or variable in this particular properties class so i have defined that now let me run this so here you can observe application started successfully without any error it means in the auto configuration class 
if all the conditions satisfied then only that particular class will be auto configured for your application by spring boot okay but if any single condition is satisfied still it will show under the positive matches for example let me search data source configuration matched because we have added the conditional conditional on properties attributes then only it is completely enabled for us but there are couple of class all the things what you are seeing in the positive matches will not by default enable for you for that all the condition like this the way you have just observed in the data source auto configuration all the condition must need to satisfied to auto configure that feature for your application for example you can see here right aop auto configuration comes under positive matches but we didn't add any aop dependency in our class path then how come it's coming under positive matches that's interesting right so if you look into the condition at the rate conditional on property spring dot aop dot auto equal to true this particular condition is matched even though you don't have the dependency of aop still this particular condition is satisfied so if you will go and check in this particular class let me open this aop auto configuration so let me zoom this conditional on property prefix spring aop name the attribute name is auto having value true by default spring boot add this particular value spring dot aop dot auto equal to true by default enabled by spring boot that is the reason this condition is satisfied and it comes under our positive match okay so if you want to validate what we discuss is correct or not let me take this particular property and i will go to the application dot properties then what i will do i will just keep it here spring dot aop dot auto i will just disable it okay by default spring boot enable it so i just forcefully disable it now if i will run my application now if you will scroll it up and if i will go to the positive matches i cannot see that aop related configuration class right so if any condition satisfied just keep a note if any condition satisfy it comes under positive matches until unless all the condition are matches it won't auto configure that feature for your application that is what we just observe the difference in data source auto configuration we enable all the features i mean we we satisfied all the condition then it is enable for us but for aop auto configuration because of this single condition satisfied it was coming under positive matches since we disabled it it is now not coming under positive matches okay this is the way to identify whether this things is configured for you or not now all the positive matches and negative matches if you want to look in a single place then you can go to the project then if i will go to the jar section there you will find org dot spring framework this one spring boot auto configure open this go inside the meta inf go inside the spring earlier it was there inside the spring dot factories but in spring boot 2.5x onwards they changed the directory and they kept all the information inside this particular file so here you can find all the positive and negative matches together in a single place so just go to the any class and try to understand how the condition are implemented or how this particular things will be auto configured okay so this is just to understand the internal flow of auto configuration it's not dead easy to remember all the classes how they are auto configuring in spring boot but if you know how this auto configuration work the way we have just derived for aop auto configuration and data source auto configuration it will be easy for you to implement your own custom starter or it will easy for you to understand the internal flow of the spring boot if you find any exception you can easily identify okay this condition might not be satisfied that is the reason this is not auto configuring for me okay cool so i believe this auto configuration knowledge is clear for you you also understand how it internally works okay let me clear everything 
now let's move to the next question that is how can you disable a specific auto configuration class in spring boot okay we understand how this auto configuration work or at which scenario it will evaluate to whether auto configure or not but there could be a huge case i want to disable the auto configuration i don't want spring boot automatically load that configuration for me how can i do that the approach is very simple go to the main class then in the main class this particular annotation at the rate spring boot application annotation you can define which auto configuration you don't want to be enabled by default for you okay so there is a attribute called exclude and you can define which class you don't want i let's say i want this data source auto configuration right okay let me check the class name or let's take this one aop auto configuration this is the class copy this class i don't want this data source auto configuration dot class will load automatically for me so for that i'll just define like this okay now this data source auto configuration will not be enable for me because i want to exclude it similarly if you want other class you can define let's say aop auto configuration i don't want to be enable for me fine so what i'll do i will just remove it from the properties file because we just disable it right i want spring it to be enable and since i have defined this particular exclude this will not be enable for me so let's run our application you will not find these two class inside your positive matches that is what we understand from the aop auto configuration i mean spring boot auto configuration right so it started now let me search this class inside the positive matches that class is not there right now can you see here exclusion what we have excluded data source auto configuration and aop auto configuration these are the two class we are just excluding from the spring boot to automatically configure for me even though you found the dependency even it satisfied all the condition okay this is another tricky interview question how you can exclude auto configure class in your spring boot application okay so what i'll do i'll just copy this because anyway i am going to share this source code with you so i'll just comment it fine so is this the only way we can exclude no you can also play with the properties file so what you can do go to the properties file then in the properties file let me zoom this for you simply let me add it down you can add the key something like spring dot auto configure dot exclude spring dot auto configure dot exclude you can define array of the classes so i'll just define single class you need to provide the fully qualified package okay org dot spring framework dot boot aop just paste it here and what is the class name you want to exclude the class name is aop auto configuration just add in the properties similarly if you want to exclude multiple classes just add a comma and give the package and class name okay this way also you can exclude that's fine so you can run and test this particular properties file instead of playing with the annotation exclude attribute now let's move to the next question that is how can you customize the default configuration in spring boot this is very straight forward approach so let's say the default port spring boot is running is 8080 i want to override that behavior how can i do that very simple step right either you can play with the application dot properties file or application dot yml file to override the default configuration in spring boot for example let me create a application dot yml file i want my application to run in a different port the default port is 8080 if i will not specify any port it will be run on port 8080 now if i will specify my own port or i am just overriding the default behavior let's say i want to run it on 8181 now my application will run on port 8181 
so similarly we are overriding the default properties here also right i am giving my own data source url username and password rather than getting the default from spring boot okay so two way you can override the configuration in spring boot by defining the properties file and by defining the application.yml file i will cover these two application.properties and application.yml there are couple of question i have to cover that i will cover as part of my next video okay for now just understand we can provide our configuration details in these two format either dot properties or dot yml if you want to override anything just define that since i have defined the port 8181 now if i'll run my application it won't load in the default port which is 8080 now you will get in the console that the server is started on port 8181 so let's verify that let me filter that can you see here tomcat initialized with port 8181 before when was not giving it was getting the 8080 that is the default port okay this is how you can override the configuration in spring boot okay now let's move to the next question that is how spring boot run method works internally so this is another commonly asked tricky interview question in spring boot we'll debug and we'll understand rather than going with the theory okay at high level when you trigger the when from the main method the run method will be triggered it first create the application context but before it create the application context it load the environment properties and then it check the application type whether it is the servlet application or it is the reactive application or it is the default application i mean the stand alone application it check that then based on that it create the application context then it register all the annotated bin into that specific context then at the end it kicked up embedded tomcat container to run our jar file so we already discussed that where our jar is there and how in the jar the main class name is defined okay it pick that class name and it trigger the execution fine this is what we understand from the theory now let's deep dive by debugging this particular concept let me go to the project first let me disable this okay otherwise there are so many statement we can see in our console i mean i'm ending up with the scroll down that's fine i'll just disable it now for i'll just stop it let me close everything apart from this main class so if you observe any spring boot application the execution always started from this main method right inside the main method it calls spring application dot run method by taking the argument is your class name and if any system argument you are giving at the run time fine now this is the class and this is the method so if i'll open the source code of this spring application dot java class and if i'll go to the run method which is defined above can you see here this is the run method so first let me add a breakpoint here then you can see here configurable environment it load all the environment properties then it create the application context then it refresh the context and started the embedded tomcat okay we are going to validate these three steps before that if i don't want to debug and you understand whether it is creating the context or not just define a variable what is the return type of this method guys spring application dot run is giving the application context okay this is the straight forward answer but to just understand internally how it create the context what are the things it consider before creating the context i am just debugging and showing you guys to get the complete picture about this internal flow okay now this first statement clear that it create the application context now let me add the breakpoint okay we already added the breakpoint that's fine let me add a breakpoint here let's run it in the debug mode request came to the main method can you see here let me scroll it down yeah it came to the main method now it will go inside the run method can you see here it came to the run method let me zoom this for you now in the run method okay let me add a breakpoint yeah i already added that's fine 
I'll just skip and I'll come to the this step. Now this is the place it will prepare the environment for you. While preparing the environment, it will look into your both the file application.properties file and application.yml file. It will load everything. I'll show you that. Okay. So I will just come to the next one. Now if I'll expand this environment and if I'll expand this property source property source list you will find here can you see here there is something called origin tracked map property source ok there are two origin tracked map property source one for your properties file one for your yml file so if you open this if you open the source this is what your properties file right these are the attribute we have defined in our properties file now if you will expand the seventh index of the origin track map property source and if you will expand the source it load from the yml file this is clear right it load from the both properties and yml file using this origin tracked mapped property source and we can see the value that's pretty clear that it first load our environment then i mean it's very simple i don't want to explain whatever the banner you are seeing here it create the banner here print the banner here that that is not something important so i am just skipping it okay now the key point that it create the application context now i will open this application context method i already added the breakpoint here fine now let's move into the statement it create the application context while creating the application context it check the application type so to validate that if we will open this method this comes under application context factory this create method can you see here and now if i'll check its implementation default application context factory reactive web server application context factory and servlet web server application context factory there are three implementation of application context factory i mean anyway at the end you will get the application context but which implementation you will return I mean which implementation you will get that is matter right and again that de depends on the web application type you are using so since we are using the servlet type let me add a breakpoint here ok fine now let's go back to the point yeah this is where it will create the application type now if I will evaluate the web application type currently we are using the servlet since we added the web starter dependency so that will consider that your web application type is servlet if you don't add any web application type then it will be the default one fine now let's go inside this create method in create method let me zoom this for you it evaluate a condition what is that if web application type not equal to servlet then null otherwise just create the context in our case it will goes to this else block so I'll just add a breakpoint here, okay? And it will return this particular annotation config servlet web server application context. So let me go inside this class. I have added the breakpoint here. That annotated bin definition reader. And here, if you observe, it registered all the annotated class. Remove the breakpoint. This is the constructor. And register base packages if you have defined anything inside your components uh, scan, or if you have defined anything on your at the rate spring boot application fine let me debug it further i'll skip it simply okay because we understand it load the environment it check the application type then it create the context so i'll directly go here it came to this class now it will execute the constructor and it will register all the bin to the application context let me move from here all set right it prepare our context first it create the application context of type let's see which one guys annotation config servlet web server application context not reactive not default one okay and inside that annotated classes after this refresh context you can see all the bins or the class what you have defined will be loaded here okay now let me verify what is there in the context pin factory bin definition map okay these are the default class can you see here interview queue application this is the bin it loaded and let's see what is there inside yeah 
this is the bean it loaded right we have this specific bean with annotated at the rate spring boot application do you have any other bean defined with at the rate component no right okay this is at the rate component but i just want to verify no it don't load right because we understand how the at the rate component scan works so it will only scan the main packages and its corresponding sub packages which is config controller because it is present inside the business dot common this is external to our root package so that is how it will not not load that specific class i mean we understand that in the previous question how this at the rate component scan works okay now once it refresh the context i don't have anything to show you that how it kicked up the embedded tomcat but let me search a class embedded tomcat okay so let me add a breakpoint if it comes to this particular place it's good otherwise it will just start a tomcat server for you see here there are also the way i mean you can tell the spring boot okay run the jetty server okay run the under two server i mean these are the different type of embedded server okay i'm not sure but yeah let, let's move further okay and we'll see if breakpoint coming to here or not it's still loading yeah it came to the tomcat servlet now what is the things is being done here it created the factory then connector customizer order stream to list context customizer okay let's see what is there in the context let's evaluate it nothing is there right so yeah it's fine i mean i don't want to deep dive it how it started the tomcat that is fine that we understand it create the embedded embedded tomcat container factory for us to kick the power jar fine now just simply move it finally it started right so what we verified it create the application context before it create the application context it check the web application type and it also load the environment properties then it registered all the annotated bean into the context then it kicked up the embedded tomcat container right so let me mute and close this flow so i believe this is pretty clear for you to understand how the run method works internally in spring boot when we run the main method or when we run the spring boot application internally what all things it loaded and how it evaluate or how the things is being worked under the hood we understand it completely okay so fine let's move to the next question that is what is command line runner in spring boot so in simple word this command line runner will help you to execute your pre processing logic or execute your data seeding logic when i say pre processing logic if anything you want to run at the time of application startup you can keep those code inside the command line runner for example if i'll go to the source code and if i'll close everything go to the project i'll just write it here okay so there is a interface given by spring boot that is command line runner if you'll go inside this command line runner it contains a method called run method okay and this is a functional interface so since this is the interface you need to override the method either you can do it in the same class or you can create a separate bean or you can create separate class and implement it from command line runner and you can use it so let me override the run method okay don't be confused there are two run method run method of this spring application let me remove this or just let me comment this there are two run method one run method from command line runner and one run method from spring boot application right now if anything you want to execute at the time of application startup you can keep those logic here let's say you want to establish the db connection quickly after the application startup or you want to populate some data to the db 
on application startup or anything any pre processing logic you want to perform then you can keep those piece of code inside this particular run method now the question here again the reason is not what is command line interface interviewer will not ask you what is command line interface or interviewer is not interested to understand the theory about the command line runner he just wanted to know how you are approaching about this run method okay so we have two run method run method from the command line runner and run method from the spring application now which which one will execute first that is the tricky question here so to verify that i'll just add a sysout statement here fine i just added statement command line runner run method executed then i'll just add this is from spring application right so the genuine statement the command line runner run method will execute after the spring application run method i will prove it right away the spring application run method will execute first then next this particular run method will execute okay so i will simply let me stop this i will simply run this you can see here right first it execute the spring application run method then if you we'll scroll down it execute the command line runner run method so command line runner run method will execute after the spring application run method this is clear for you right fine cool so that's it for today's session let's wind up here and in coming days i will come up with more questions okay so i hope you found it valuable and learned something new today so if you have any question suggestions or if you have any spring boot questions or interview experience you would like to share please feel free to leave them in the comment below so until next time keep learning i will see you in the next video that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept